guys, Paul Martin Belts back together for a brand new video. This is going to be a detailed review of the current NWA domed glow replica belt. Uh, there's been a few iterations of this belt made in replica form over the years, but I've got to say this one is by far the best. I believe this is listed on uh, Wrestling Superstore or other places as an ultra deluxe version of this replica belt. And I've got to be honest, this is by far the best version of this belt I've seen, and it's probably one of, if not the best replica belt made of any belt. Uh, the attention to detail and the accuracy is pretty much spot on. Uh, there's nothing I've really seen that looks off about this belt at all. M normally replica belts have some differences, some errors, but this is honestly a very impressive belt. Uh, so we're going to take a look at it. This is made by Figures Inc, just like the WWE belts are, so the quality is really good. The detail, we'll get into it. So we'll start off with the strap. As you can see immediately, the belt itself has actual lacing going all the way around. This is what the real belt had. While this isn't real leather, like the real belt would have, uh, the lacing is still very impressive. So you can see just up close there, how it just laces in and out. On real belts, normally the lacings, there's a little bit more. Uh, there's not normally these gaps between, but it's not really something to complain about because they've got done such a good job on this. Uh, the strap, of course, is just the simulated leather, so it's vinyl, um, kind of foam vinyl boards inside, but it's still a very good belt, and the fact that it has the lacing on it is very impressive. Um, there's no tooling on the belt, of course, uh, no snap boxes, there's two by six snaps on both sides. One thing about the NWA Dome Glow belt that was always strange was the snaps were actually reversed. Most belts have these snaps on the opposite side, while they have these male snaps on the left hand side. For whatever reason this belt was always made the opposite way around, so this has copied that quite accurately so. Uh, so again, 2x6 brass snaps there. So as far as the, as the strap goes, there's not exactly too much to point out. You can just see there's no tooling. The lacing itself though, like I said, very impressive. We'll take a look at the back of the strap just now. So. Right off the bat, there's a lot of screws. That is, of course, for the plates. It's a five plate belt, but also the fact it has the grommets. It has seven grommets on each side, a row of three, then two, then two. So you can see all the bolts there. On the back here, you have the Figures Inc patch. So you can see, of course, it's licensed by Figures Inc. It's a 2016 replica belt. So uh, there was older versions. I think there was ones made in like 2004, eight, so on but this is a 2016 version and it's very impressive i'm really honestly kind of blown away when i first opened this i'm actually re-leathering this belt for a customer so there'll be a video coming out shortly of it uh, on real leather uh, laced real leather which is a pain to do but it'll look nice when it's done so just to get a close-up on that patch you can see it's officially licensed product of the national wrestling alliance 2016 it says the NWA logo is a trademark, etc. And of course, there's the Figures Inc. details. Yeah, it's got the, the kind of rougher vinyl on the back that Figures Inc. tend to use on all the replica belts. Uh, they also use this style of the vinyl on the snap boxes on the front of most belts that have snap tooling, uh, instead of actually imprinting things. But. Yeah, so that's pretty much all there is to say about the strap. Uh, the belt itself actually is very long. On the website, it says it's 56 inches in length. So kind of ridiculously wide belt. Uh, most belts kind of stop around 50, 52, but again, for whatever reason, this one is a bit longer, but it's also the thick strap, of course, as you can see. Really nice. Uh, we'll get onto the plates. So the four smaller side plates are all identical sizes. Uh, they've got the four flags of Canada. That's an old Canadian flag before anyone asks about it. I can't remember what year, what years that's for because I'm not, geography is not my strong suit. Uh, but Canada, Australia, Mexico, and Japan. So uh, that is what the original NWA belt had on it. So which is why it's got the old Canadian flag. I believe the current NWA belts do use the uh, modern Canadian flag, the uh, white and red one with the Leaf, again, geography, no. <laughs> uh, yes, yeah, so it's got the four flags there with the country's names at the top. You can see, hopefully, we'll get a close up on the details there. You can see the etching. While the side plates don't have that much detail to etch other than the flags, but they're painted in mostly, so you don't see much of that depth. 
the border is raised, so you can see there. It actually has these imitation screws here as well on both sides, so on both sides of each side plate, I should say. And they also feature them on the corners of the center plate. These screws are just for show, but I believe that's part of the way the original belts were attached to the strap. So again, copying that from the original belt. I'm not exactly sure what these kind of bumpy silver pieces are. Apologies, because the plates are very dirty. Um, I'm gonna be re-leathering this, so it's been sat in the garage for a couple of days, and yeah, it'll be polished up and looking nice in the final re video. But yeah, these little silver areas are on all of the plates and the bigger ones up here on the sand plate. Not exactly sure what those are, but yeah, so they are what they are, I guess. So we got Canada, you can see the paint detail is really nice. Again, when it's painted in, you don't see the etching as well. But the quality of the etch, the quality of the gold colouring is really nice as well. You can see the close-up details on the inside of the Mexican flag looking really nice there as well. And the Japanese flag a little bit more simplistic, but it looks really good. And of course the grommets. So like I said, seven on each side, rows between the plates, with painted in black on the inside. Uh, as far as the center plate goes, we got the American flag there, so hopefully the detail of it's coming up there. You can actually see the depth of all these details here quite nicely. The two wrestlers grappling there. Actually, that looks like a pin, um, so it looks really good. The wrestling actually is quite interesting because uh, it's actually, well, and the wording here again is quite interesting because it's etched once for these details to show and then it's etched again into the plate for the paint to be put in here. So I don't know if that makes much sense, but you can see one layer, two layer, then a third layer down there. It has a removable flare and end plate on it. Um, I'm not familiar enough with the Dome Globe belt to know if it had a name plate or if it said Ric Flair or Flair, so apologies for that. The Dome Globe itself is probably the centerpiece of this belt. Um, it's got a very good dome to it there, you can see. And as is hopefully shown up there, the NWA letters are actually raised up off of the globe itself, so. That's probably a good angle for it there. You can especially see on the A, the rays there. So yeah, the dome globe is very impressive. It looks really good. The NWA letters again being raised look really good. Now at the top it says National Wrestling Alliance. So one thing I've just kind of noticed is the letters themselves are kind of off center. Um, I don't know if once I remove this plate, it might be that that's a stacked piece that might have just been screwed on incorrectly or that might be how it's supposed to be made. Um, again, not familiar enough with this belt to know for sure. And again, world's heavyweight champion at the top. So it's interesting, one of the only belts that says world's. Uh, I know that's a detail some people don't like. I think it's quite cool. Uh, again, these plates, they're four to six millimeters thick, I think. The side plates are four as you can see hopefully there. And the center plate is probably about five, six really. It's got this kind of raised dotted border, which comes a bit higher, so. And of course with the, from the base of the plate to the top of the dome globe, it's probably about 10 mil, 10, 12 mil from the base plate. So like I said, a really good detailed belt. If you're thinking of getting this wrapped belt, I 100% recommend it. The strap itself looks really cool. As far as the display piece goes, it's fantastic. Uh, if you're wanting it re-leathered, that's obviously the best way to get this looking as good as it can be. But as a display piece right off as standard, looks amazing. Detail on the plates, like I said, perfect. Honestly blown away when I first opened this belt. Uh, that being said, I think that's everything there is really to cover on this belt. Uh, like I said, there'll be a detailed look at this belt again once it's re-leathered on a real leather strap with the lacing, which will not be fun, but it will look good in the end. So that video will be coming out soon. But yeah, thank you very much for watching. If you have any questions or any corrections, comments of anything I've said about this belt, I'm curious to know about the situation of the nameplate, because I actually didn't know there was nameplates on this belt. I've, I think I've seen them before, but normally it was just left blank. So not familiar enough with the history of this belt to really know that. 
So yeah, if you have any comments on any stupid things I've said in this video, please leave them down below, I'd be interested to read them. Thank you very much for watching, I hope you enjoyed this. Please subscribe and give the video a thumbs up. It really helps out my channel. That being said, thank you.